Good to see those who have made it out tonight. Pizza? Yeah. No, <laughs> no I was um, teriyaki chicken. <laughs> oh. Who is it? Steak if it's ready, Doctor. Doctor. Tell them hi. <laughs> Flash says hi. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, let's have a prayer and we'll we'll get right into it. Um, some of you guys will see if we have enough guys here. Um, I think we can take and move the pews back into their proper positions. Um, appreciate um, Phil and Ed um, coming down and getting most of the big chunks of everything cleaned up in the sanctuary. And so, um, yeah. And I think we got, I think we got most of the stuff going on. We are leaving the scaffolding up for you to adjust the lights. I can do it with just the I don't know you can, but the scaffolding's set up. Yeah, well, you're with the scaffolding. Well, if that's Save the case, then maybe we should use the <coughs> scaffolding. Did they finish um, covering up all the scuffs inside the ring? Marty did. Every, everything's oh, fine? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, Marty, he was very meticulous in painting in all of those yeah, scratches. He was good. Because okay. somebody bought him a new pan and he, he, he went to town with it. So, um, and, and John and them headed back this this morning. Um, so, so thankful for them coming and, oh, and doing that. Um, I thought it would be cute, but um, I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead, get the word out. Yeah. So everybody wear sunglasses or bring your sunglasses Sunday, <laughs> and we'll take a picture and say to John. <laughs> We, everybody had to wear shades to church, you know. <laughs> so, oh, uh, Shady Sunday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Ed was serious, though. He said, well, then we got to take with the sunglasses off and everybody have a nice picture. And I thought, well, why? I well, no, that was just for us. <laughs> I know what y'all look like. So. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, so it sure is it's, it's a blessing um, to have people who just willing to help mm -hmm. so so let's remember remember to thank the lord for those that came out and helped and um we got to get us a young wiry person <laughs> to start working in the attic i think jason just about had enough of that <laughs> she went through the attic up there pulling wires and everything else this so, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> you're not young it anymore seems like, it seems like our younger wiry guys just Seem to disappear when that's you know <laughs> when it's about time for that to happen. So uh, like anyhow, uh, I do appreciate you all being here tonight. Uh, and so why don't we go ahead and we'll <clears throat> look to the Lord in a word of prayer and we'll get started. As we seek the Lord's blessing upon our time here tonight, uh, Brother Warren, open us in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this evening. I just thank you for the blessings of life. Uh, thank you for this rain that you've given us. Um, just ask Heavenly Father that you will bless your words as it goes forth the day and this, uh, that take it into our hearts and our minds and we can use it in our daily lives. Forgive me of my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, um, probably the most familiar or recognizable psalm is the 23rd Psalm. And, and um, actually, the few times I actually did go to the community church out there where I was raised, um, they had a contest, you know, to see who could memorize the 23rd Psalm. And um, I did. I, I did. And I didn't know that uh, Pastor Penhall would have me stand in front of the entire <laughs> church and recite it, but I did that too. And, um, and so... I guess being that the, the first bit of scripture I ever memorized, um, it's always had a special place in my heart as well. And so, and there's a book, <clears throat> which I'm not being able to find, by the way, you guys. And so if anybody borrowed a, a shepherd's guide to the 23rd Psalm, I, no repercussions. You know, if you want to just slide it back in my box in the office, I'll just, you <laughs> no know, questions just, no harm, no foul. Um, but if you've never read that little book, it's a little book and it doesn't take much to read. It is an, it is an awesome, um, like it just says, Shepherds look at the 23rd Psalm. And some of the things that he brings out um, are really fascinating. But 
I'm not going to go down that road tonight with it. Now you can bring it up if you want, but um, <clears throat> I I like the idea of looking at this psalm, and I and I found this that another brother has done it that, um, along this line, and it and it came out that contentment is no problem when you're following the good shepherd. Mm-hmm. Contentment is no problem when you're following the good shepherd. And, and so this 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 So... Any of you ever have um, problems with contentment? You ever get discontented? <laughs> right? And, and really, I, I think that's something that probably almost everybody from time to time has experienced. The lack of, of just peace or contentment. And, and, you know, it's kind of like, in, in not picking ladies, you've got your own way that you can do this. and, and um, But it's like, Guys, how, how do you feel when your kids or, or your wife complains about something? And it, it's kind of like, if you stop and think about it, a lot of these guys <coughs> take it as a reflection of their ability to provide <coughs> care for their family. And so if you're complaining about that, then it, I, it must be because I'm doing an inadequate job or I'm not, you know, I'm not doing a good enough job. Um, it'd be like, um, after every meal that your wife prepares you, um, critiquing it. Pretty soon you'd become your own cook and you'd, mm-hmm. you'd take care of meals yourself, you know. You'd probably even find yourself eating by yourself. And, and so it's it just like, we need to understand that um, when we're looking for contentment, when we're desiring contentment and peace, there are things that we can incorporate in our lives that help bring that about that help us uh, in that journey and and so when we lack at when we lack contentment as God's children are we indirectly or maybe directly saying that the good shepherd isn't adequately providing for us that the good shepherd is not getting the job done and and so it just you know, it's just something to think about because if you can utter with David the, the that first verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Okay? And, and so if I'm not content, if I'm complaining, if I'm not finding peace in, in whatnot in, in this life, then is that not a reflection upon the shepherd? Now, so often we want to we want to take the twenty third psalm, and, and rightfully so. I don't have a problem with this. We want to make the association between um, between the local church and the and the pastor, and the pastor is the under shepherd of, of God or of the Lord, and, and so. And, and I don't have a problem with this being a, a guide for of instruction, a guide for modeling, none whatsoever. But it's important to realize that. Um, David <clears throat> uttered these words, and I think he wasn't uttering them as, quote, king. He was uttering them as a child of God, and how the Lord was working in his life and through his life and what he did, does and accomplishes in his life. And, it, and it's just like being a sheep that has a good shepherd, because those sheep will always be at rest. They'll have contentment. And, and, and so... Um, I, I read, I was reading about, I like this quote, and, and it just, from its form, and looking at this, um, we ought not to speak too long about God with our minds before we turn and speak to God from our heart. 
We spend a lot of time talking to God from our minds instead of speaking to God with our hearts. And, and so um, I like one guy said, we must stir a lot of prayer into the stew of our theology. And I, and I just, you know, that may not do anything for you, but it got to me, you know, got me thinking, you know, stir a lot of prayer into the stew of our theology. And, and, and so it, it's in the crises of life, we, we need to understand that they're designed to help draw us closer to the Lord. And, and if we aren't careful, we kind of turn to theological statements and, and miss the, the truth or the power of the statements about how God's mercy is ever present in the life of His children and for all those who will, will seek after Him. And, and so it, it's, I just, I like this. So what I want you to consider real quick is, is what are the primary enemies of the contentment or contentment in your life? What are the enemies of contentment in your life? What's keeping you from being at peace? What's keeping you from being satisfied with your shepherd? Are there situations or, or are there regular pressures and attacks in your life that come from various um, circumstances or situations or individuals? You know, what, what's attacking your sense of peace? And, and, and not living in that contentment or peace that's provided under the well-being and watch care of the Good Shepherd. Um, in what ways, on the other side of this, in what way is your cup overflowing? Is your cup overflowing? Mm -hmm. Just has there been a, has there been any time recently where your cup has overflowed? Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about flying low, overflowing, overflowing. You know, and I do think crises is a word, isn't it? No, no. crisis. <laughs> I like that word. <laughs> How long do I have to complain and say it before I can get Webster to put it in the dictionary? You get the Berkey high, look, high eyebrow. Now. <laughs> you don't, you don't, oh my goodness. One eyebrow. Some of us are old. Sure. Yeah. They put eight in the, in the dictionary. If, I, if they can get eight in there, I can get crisis. I'm, I'm just going to say it. You can mock me all you want. I'm secure in my illiteracy, too. Uh, just keep saying what I say. But um, are you spending the, the necessary time that you need um, lying down and meditating beside the still waters, figuratively speaking? Or, or are you making sure that you're allowing God the opportunity to restore your soul? To refresh you. Do you really believe that the journey through the valley of death leads to a better life for those who have a relationship with the Good Shepherd? And, and that question is one that, okay, if you believe that, then that should be impacting what's going on in your life. Okay? And so I want you to think about those. I may share them again with you at the end, but real quickly. Let's get, let's get into this, okay? So, we know that David said, the Lord is my shepherd, and, and so how can I follow the example of the good shepherd and what David is talking about? So, how can I apply it right here, right now, as an under-shepherd of the Lord, but how can we all apply it knowing who our good shepherd is, knowing who is the one who this is all about? And, and so verse number two is a statement that we can look at and realize that contentment's no problem when we live in a peaceful tranquility. So contentment, contentment's not a problem. Shelter, if we shelter ourselves from the hustle and bustle of life, and, and if we filled ourselves with so many activities and, and things that we just gotta do here, we gotta be here, all of a sudden it crowds out the quiet time. Mm -hmm. it, it crowds out the time of, of reflection and, and meditation and, and 
figuratively, lying <laughs> beside the still water. I don't know if you've ever had the, the blessing of, you know, being able to go somewhere where nobody's around. And, and in Oregon, there were times when we could go to places and lay out a blanket and just lay by the river. Right. Now, most of you would say, well, for you, us, it's a beach chair, right? You know, you're sitting in a beach chair, listen to the waves roll in, blah, 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 you know. Um, but getting up to a quiet place and just praying and reflecting upon the Lord and enjoying the peace and the calm of it all, what's the worst experience you can have other than wild animals when you're out in a situation like that? Snipers. <laughs> <laughs> you were close. <laughs> if you're out there something like that, you think you're out there all alone, and then a couple other hikers come walking along. Yeah. Now that'll freak you out. It's like, you know, was, did I say that out loud or was it in my head? You know, <laughs> bears all mine. Oh yeah. And, and so he says there in that second verse, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. The green pastures of life, lying in the good places, being being in the places that for for a flock of sheep, having having green pastures of, of fresh, call it alfalfa. Well, they don't want you don't want your sheep wandering through the fields of alfalfa, but clover and, and and grass and just that's a good place to be, and they're and they're at peace and content as long as there's no wild animals running around threatening their call or and, and, and so but the quiet waters right the quiet waters do you think God wants to free us from our anxieties yes mm -hmm. yes I do are we are you willing to let him free you from your anxieties I mean, what are you so uptight about? What are you so worried about? What do you and, and I can I if I had a mirror, I'd still be saying the same exact thing right now. You know, that's like taking your burdens to the <clears throat> to the cross, you know, and and laying them down and leaving them with you. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that with those, how are you going to do it with your anxiety? <clears throat> um. <clears throat> You ever been in, um, in physical therapy where they, you know, put you on the massage chair and, and, and whatnot, and they're they're gonna leave you there for a while? And they put the headphones on, and they most a lot of times, what do they have in the background? Water, mm -hmm. the sound of, of a stream or a sound of the ocean, and, and and I don't know why water like that is so calming, but it, but it's like, you know. It, it just it is the thing that a lot of you know a lot of different places use as as a way to calm or relax people and so Cindy isn't it has an says Cindy has an app on her phone to go to bed at night and it's either rainwater or waves from the ocean or crickets or crickets, crickets. yeah or with thunder lightning <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say <laughs> anything because if I did. My wife will watch it and I'll get in trouble. But, you know, the sound of running water in the middle of the night. Just saying. Just saying. Anyhow, moving along. So, you know, he's, where does God want to lead you? When's the last time you've actually sat down, meditated upon the, the, the presence of the Lord and God's Word in your life personally, individually, and just consider, where is God leading me? What is God desiring for me to do with Him? And and because because David made it clear that He's going to lead me to a calm place where I can meditate upon Him. That's those green pastures, and He's going to lead me. Doesn't say by the the, the raging rivers and and roaring waters and waves no he, he says by the still waters and usually what do we do when there's a nice still pond 
throw a rock in it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we start, it. We start skipping rocks across it, making waves, and it's like, I wonder if the fish sit underneath there and go, can you believe these idiots? He's got this nice calm air, and they're sitting there stirring up waves. His dad's over here fishing, and I'm over here skipping rocks. <laughs> and, 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 and so I'm like, I think I do like <laughs> it, it just like, um, why did I think of a 250 pound grouper that that boy caught in Florida? So that was a huge fish. That was. That's a lot of fish. It was a lot of fish. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's just for my fisherman in the crowd. Moving along. Go ahead, Craig. You know, the stillness um, sometimes can cause anxiety to uh, be louder to you. It depends on whether or not you're willing to listen. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it used to be uh, stillness and like the beach, the ocean. But uh, for me, for a long period of time, it was the pool. Uh, when I put my snorkel on and put my head under the water, it is quiet. And it just, I had, I had anxiety when Marie got me a membership to go swimming here in town. And I thought, you know, all the problems that I've had, am I gonna get, am I gonna get, you know, my breathing gonna freak out, and is my heart gonna stay? And I and just now put so my. you're gonna get in the water and plug your tongue. <laughs> 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 I, 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 uh, I put my head under the water, and I'm, I'm not kidding. It just, it came back to me like a blanket just being pulled over the top of you. It was it was so comforting to just go into prayer. Yeah. It is an hour and a half, two hours of just talking to God. Yeah. And it is so peaceful. Um, and a lot of people don't have prayer closets. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't allow themselves to have that quiet time with God. And it doesn't have to be necessarily quiet, but it definitely has to be peaceful. But I think the Holy Spirit wants a time of, of, of the day for you to take and set apart for Him to have a peaceful moment that He can share, this is what I want for you today. Um, because He talks about, in this passage here, He talks about the green pasture. He's wanting you to partake. Not just in communication, not just in fellowship, but he's wanting you to have a meal there. And so, you know, the, the Holy Spirit's wanting you to partake in just a sweet, intimate moment by the, by the river's edge. And a lot of people just, they don't take the time in a day to have that peaceful moment with the Lord. Notice the one phrase that he... Steak now. We're getting bitter. <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one um, um, phrase, though, um, makes me lie down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, again, I just, I just had the blessing of being raised in a in a place that had wide open spaces, and <clears throat> to lay down. In, in the tall in the tall grass yeah. and, and and it's cool and it, and it just kind of you know it, it there's it is peaceful and um, and so knowing that that that's what he's trying to do as the good shepherd these are the kind of places this kind of environment he wants us to dwell in to, to function in to live in. <coughs> And, and he goes on that, that first part, and that's why the question, you know, understanding that contentment's no problem when we allow God to kind of recharge our batteries, when we allow God to energize us and to um, encourage us. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. And, and that's, you know, our tendency is kind of to let ourselves get run down before we stop and and relax or or just keep going till we collapse or till we burn out or, or just whatever. We we just use up all our energy. You ever you ever got to the place where I I just have no more energy. You know. I, I just 
you know, I just can't. I'm, I'm run down, I'm tired, I'm burned out, burned up, you know. And, and so what we need to understand that the God is in the business as our good shepherd, as our ministering Lord, are restoring our souls so that we are to refresh us, to renew us, to enter, re-energize us so that we can continue to minister to others so that we can continue to let our light so shine, right? And, and, and not allow ourselves to get so dim that people wonder, you know, where, where's the light, you know? And, and so I think the, the, the thing we need to remember, he gives us grace upon grace. He gives us what we need um, daily. He'll give us a fresh supply of whatever it is that we need every day if we'll just sometimes just what yeah. scripture say? Be still and know that he's God. Yeah. Be still. You have to stop and let him in. Have you ever, you know, how many of you parents ever told your kids to be still? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Still. And you had a reason to, for doing that, right? It was like, just sit still. Right? I love it. It's entertainment for me when Priscilla cuts the hair of when first our kids and now the grandkids and stuff. And it's like, so just get ready to start a cut and then they'll move. And she's gotten really good over the last 40 plus years of, of her timing, you know. And, and, uh, and, and as they get older, you know, it's kind of like, just sit still. I'm almost done, you know. And, and I just, I can picture God sometimes, just sit still, be calm, settle down, it'll be okay, I got this. Right? And, and so that, again, the activity of God, where is He going to lead me? The laws of the What's He say in that the second part of that verse? Paths of righteousness. And why is He going to lead me in those paths? For His name's sake. For His name's sake. His reputation is on the line. That's right. Right? His, his reputation. He wants to lead us in a, in a, down the right paths, in the paths of righteousness, for His name's sake. And, and sometimes we, you know, we get confused and discouraged and disillusioned and, and on and on, etc., etc. And, and when we feel like we're lost or we doubt the directing hand of God in our lives. And, and it's, we need to remember it's God's reputation that's at stake. Um, it, when we identify ourselves as the child of God and we're just trying to live for the Lord and we, we're trying to honor, it, it's, it's important for us to understand God will always lead us um, on the straight and narrow. God will always lead us down a proper path if we're willing to follow. But we've got to be willing to be still, to listen to Him, to, to allow Him to energize us and... and and he's going to guide us in a life that I think is marked by holiness and a life that's marked by doing that which is pleasing in the sight of God. And, and it's more important than just giving us guidance in, in, in a specific, a, a moral kind of way, but it's, it's, it's giving us direction related to the different areas of our life. What do I say when you're making plans? If you want to know what God's desire is, when should you ask? Before, before, you, make before you make up your mind what you're going to do. <laughs> okay? If, if you've already made up your mind what you're going to do, don't, don't think that you're going to get God just to rubber stamp your plan. And, and it, why? Because He'll lead you. And there's a difference. He leads. Are you willing to follow and, and realize that the way that he's going to lead you may not be the path that you want to go down. But he's going to lead you down a path that, that is going to highlight the honor and integrity that's found in his name. The righteousness that's associated with his name. And so, anyway, some thoughts I'm kind of rushing here. I don't know why. Okay, so we, we get to verse 4, and, and realize, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. 
Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Should contentment be a problem when we comprehend the reality of God's presence with us? Why is contentment sometimes so hard to find in the life of children of God? Have you ever met a, a child of God that isn't very contented? He is or is it? Isn't. You know. yeah. They should be. We, we should be, but sometimes yeah. we're just not, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, and that gets back to and, um, those moments in our life when we fail to realize the, the presence of God that is with us. The, the, the presence of God, the indwelling presence of the Spirit of God that, that's there to lead us and guide us and direct us and convict us and, and of sin, righteousness, and judgment, right? And, and so the Lord's protection and discipline are with us at all times. And, and so thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And, and uh, a lot of times when we look at the rod and the staff, it, it's just merely... Um, tools of discipline and correction, but the psalmist that David here said they they comfort me. I don't think he was a masochist, and, and I, I don't think he you know was was in this um, inflicting pain upon himself, and and so it's just like no, there is a comfort in knowing that, and and this is way out there, okay. So if you forget this, this is okay, but. There's comfort in knowing that my shepherd is well armed. Mm -hmm. That my shepherd has the tools to handle Mm -hmm. the situations, whatever they may be. Yes, and sometimes my shepherd may have to use those to pull me back or to straighten me out or whatever. But I should find comfort in the knowledge of my shepherd having the tools that he needs to lead me through any situation in my life. And, and so when he gets to the, the valley of the shadow of death, you know, it's kind of like, hmm. Realizing that contentment is, isn't or shouldn't be a problem when we realize that we can feast as a guest at God's table. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. I, I mean, Matt, I have often talked about, um, you know, Craig talking about a quiet place to go pray. This building is not a good place for me to be to in the middle of the night to pray and have a conversation with God. Because this building talks back. It messes with me, right? I, I spent um, an hour or so before you guys got here really believing there was somebody else in the building. And, you know, and it's just like, I know there's not after all these years. I, it shouldn't, but it just, I blame my brothers. I, I just do, I blame my brothers, you know. It's like, how many of you, when you were little, had a brother that would hide under the bed, yeah. and, and if you let your leg, you know, kind of lean off over the side, would reach up and grab it real quick? You, yeah, that's unsettling. Yeah. I got something. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, PTSD. Well, oh my goodness. No, no I, I'm just, I kid you not, this building, can you spend it here every night? Especially when you walk down these stairs right here. You could swear someone's following. Yeah. <laughs> or, or when your husband sneaks into the building and, no. and you know you walk around the corner and it just freaks you out. <sighs> but I always, I got you know Becky and I had a, an arrangement when she was cleaning. I, I'd come in and I'd start banging on things yeah. and hollering, I'm here. You know, it's like, and you all, if you if you saw that or heard that, you, what in the world's wrong with you? You have no connection to what it is. All I got to say is, after services is over and we pray and we dismiss, let me turn out all the lights and you just stay here for a while. Yeah. 
That, that's all. I, I really believe that's all it will take for some of you. Especially in the basement. Oh man, you know, and so there's things unspeakable. Yeah, yeah. That's what we ought to do. <laughs> that ought to become a new form of church punishment. <laughs> You mean, I mean, we're going to lock you in the church building with all the lights off in the middle of the night. <laughs> Bring your sleeping bag. You're spending the night. Oh, wow. We'll call it the chokey. <laughs> the chokey? Yeah. That's from Matilda. That's where the back kids went. <laughs> Wasn't a pretty No, I haven't seen Matilda, so. <laughs> oh, gee <laughs> Back to an overflowing cup, you know, and that's like, and then understanding that that there should be excitement in our hearts and in our and in our lives and our understanding when we consider the promises of God, not only pertaining to right here, right now, but our future. If you look at verse six, he says, "Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life." Right here, right now. The mercy of God and the goodness of God, they're, they're there. Okay. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I think there's a, um, a continuing eternal um, perspective in that phrase. Right? And, and so, I, I mean, you, you look at that and you think about it and it's just, man. Because the Lord's our shepherd, I don't lack anything. He satisfies my needs. And, and he's the one that brings me to a place that he wants me to be. He, he's the one who independently functions and, and I can depend upon him. And, and, and just realize that, that he is my shepherd. Um, I found this, and this was um, by one commentator. And he, and he says that he had a prescription for learning to trust the Lord. And what his prescription for learning to trust the Lord was um, wrapped up in um, these seven statements that he said that he memorized and he prayed over them each day. And they, you know, they kind of became the fabric for his way of thinking and feeling about things. And so he says, the Lord will work for me. The Lord will provide for me. The Lord will keep me going. The Lord will guide me. The Lord will protect me. The Lord will heal me. The Lord will pursue me. And, and he said those were the seven things that he just over and over and over reminded himself. That, that his Lord is working, providing, keeping, guiding, protecting, healing, and pursuing. Why? Because he's a good shepherd. He's our good shepherd, and um, I can't give credit for this. Now, these last two things, if you guys are interested in having copies of it all, I'll, I'll get it to you. Um, but I don't know where I got this. I apologize for that. Um, but it's, it's called an interesting way to look at the 23rd Psalm. Some of it, somebody's going to Google this, and they'll tell me right where I found it. But it says, the Lord is my shepherd. That's relationship. I shall not want. That's supply. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That's rest. He leadeth me beside the still waters. That's refreshment. He restores my soul. That's healing. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. That's guidance. For his name's sake. That's purpose. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's testing. I will fear no evil, that's protection. For thou art with me, that's faithfulness. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, that's discipline. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, that's hope. Thou anointest my head with oil, that's consecration. My cup runneth over, that's abundance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's blessing. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. That's security. Forever. That's eternity. And it's like, I, I like that. That's cool. And so this is something, something for you guys to think about. But anyhow, any, any thoughts or, or 
anything to add on this 23rd song. I think Kevin beat you to the punch. Who? <coughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Who? Me? You. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, one of the questions that was asked earlier is what are some of the keys to contentment? And uh, it just reminded me of something I've been looking at. One of the things that, and I'm just saying one of them, is humility. Mm -hmm. Because if you're prideful, you think you deserve things. Mm -hmm. You, or you deserve more than you're getting. So you're never content with pride. Hmm. And uh, <coughs> the Bible says in several places that humility, the result is God will raise you up. Mm -hmm. And He will honor you. So these these situations here, the still water, the green grass, mm -hmm. you're content with those things because you know it's not because you deserve it, but because He loves you. Yeah. I think the, the amazing part about that line of the reasoning and understanding is that the last thing that you just said it is that he does this for me, not because I deserve this, but because he loves me. Yeah, I mean, he is the good shepherd. And a good shepherd's gonna do those things, why? Because he wants his flock to flourish. See, it, it, it's not, I, I mean, anyhow, go ahead, John. Well, there's two paths. There's a path, path of righteousness and unrighteousness. <laughs> and if you, uh, for myself, what I, you know, I, I have to stay focused because if I don't, I get sidetracked real quick for whatever reason. But then once you get on the righteous deal, like I try to start the morning with reading my uh, verse mm -hmm. and uh, I've got it into my phone, but then the rest of the day, like it almost makes me want to just explode right now. But then when you start listening to, to uh, I love the blues as far as the blues is pretty music. But if you listen to something like I speak uh -oh. <clears throat> I speak Jesus, that song, it's like I'll sit and just explode. It just I can't even talk talk about it. But it just <clears throat> and you start your day like that and you're full. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you can go the other way. <laughs> That's pretty easy to do too. Really, if you don't stay focused all the way. It's easy to get sidetracked and deterred and, and yeah, like Brother Kevin's talking about, it's easy it's easy to allow yourself to think I deserve this. And I'll, and usually when you start thinking that way you get sidetracked. You just yeah. you know. Anything else? Okay, I'm, we're going to wrap this up early tonight with the hopes that we can get the pews back in place. <laughs> and so um, I think we've got enough able bodied ladies here to get that done while let's get it, you know. <laughs> Cheers. Any, any, any prayer requests or, or prayer praises or whatnot that you all want to share with us? Marie. Um, uh, Michael's niece, who lives in Fresno, uh, they just had their first grandbaby today, and he was born at 34 weeks, so he's only 3 pounds, 10 ounces. He's in the NICU um, at Valley Children. So please just keep them in prayer. I'd like for you to remember our youngest daughter. Um, she's been going to school to become a counselor, uh, child family counselor, and she found out that her school um, may lose their accreditation. Mm. And she's supposed to graduate in August. So uh, remember her in your prayers and that that doesn't happen because she's getting really discouraged right now. Remember that. Jason. Um, a while back, my uh, brother from another mother, Lloyd, 
I mentioned before he was Brandon Boyd, he, uh, he had had an issue at work with his heart and he's since then he's got a doctor's appointment he had and they've got scheduled him for like blood work and stuff and I have a feeling he's going to probably have either hypertension or high blood pressure so he's going to have to make some life changes but he's going to be waiting for results on that so keep him in the first. Remember that. Anything else? It wasn't, it wasn't a prayer request, but a praise. Um, I appreciate the church praying for me. Sunday. Uh, I got in the car up there. And I didn't know if I was going to make it home. And I could feel their prayers. And uh, it was a crazy drive. I needed them. So thank you Amen. very much. Anything else? Appreciate you guys praying for Rochelle and Adam, some of the things that we were, well, I shouldn't say we, but the, I was concerned about. They're starting, some of them are starting to work themselves out. So that's really, really. Awesome. So, so have you heard that the guys made it safely down back to the home? No, I haven't heard anything just back from any of them. Marty only had like a 40 minute drive at the rest of them. Yeah. You know, long, so, they, uh, I imagine if, she, if they hadn't made it home, Charnel would be calling and asking me where her husband was at. <laughs> what did so, you do with them? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, or Esther yeah. would be calling Craig and Marie, you know. Wondering where John's at, so anyhow. I was crazy by a uh, chiropractor who got rid of my pain, so <coughs> now I've got to find my feet. So I pinched I all the nerves it. in my legs for a year, <laughs> and now my they're coming back. So I'm getting better day by day, and I think it's going to how many of you knew that, uh, and you may have all known, and I was the last one to find Richard Bishop got, you know, rear-ended, someone yeah. rear-ended him, no. and, oh, and he's really hurting, you know, looks like he's got a little bit of whiplash, but, um, and so remember him. Yeah. And, um, was that today? No. no, it was a couple days ago. It was more than a couple days ago. I don't know what he was in. All I know is that he got rear-ended and, and um, really, you know, he was, he came by and visited yesterday. Was yesterday? Yeah, and, and, and I was talking to him and, and, um, and so anyway. He's also been uh, battling boils. Yeah. Popping up on his yeah. body. He's oh, wow. very painful. <laughs> I wasn't going to end the night on that, but yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 oh, maybe that's what he needs. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about it. Yeah, okay. Let's turn over to Joe. <laughs> yeah, start with that and then you won't hear it. Sorry, I'm scratching. If there's nothing else, let's stand together and look at the book. Bridge got the right idea. Yeah, let's get out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, guys, uh, head to the sanctuary, and we're trying to get, get that stuff back in place. Um, and so with that in mind, Brother Tom, dismiss us in prayer, please. Well, Father, thank you for this evening. And we study your word and meditate upon your word. And help us, Father, to have a close relationship with you every day. And that you're right here for us, and you want the best for us. I just follow you, believe you, and obey you. Pray for, pray for these requests that they made, Father, to deal with them and work with each one according to your will. And we want the best for everybody. We're thankful the men that came and did the work on the, the lighting, Father. Be close to them and take care of them. Keep them safe. Pray, Father, that you'll watch over us this evening and help us as we work in the sanctuary. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.